This is Them, Adventures with Extremists by John Ronson. And sorry, I had to make sure my mic was on. Um, this is a uh, an interesting book, and it's kind of a compilation of interviews and kind of ride-alongs. I don't know if that's the appropriate way to say it. But uh, John goes around to several kind of extremist leaders, like a jihadist, uh, Ku Klux Klan guy, uh, David Icke, Alex Jones, uh, a lot of different groups, and interviews them and tries to kind of get in their head and and uh, report back to you about why these guys th believe what they believe. And being a Jewish guy himself, his whole angle is, do these people really believe that Jews are running the world and that sort of thing? As he says here on the cover, is there really, as extremists claim, a secret room from which a tiny elite secretly rule the world? And if so, can it be found? Uh, so that's kind of the underpinning on which all the other stuff is based. John Ronson is a really irritating guy to read. Some of his, his tone is really kind of irritating in that he comes across as the kind of guy in high school that really wanted to hang out with the cool kids, but uh, his currency was making fun of the other kids. So he would you know, find out the dirt on these guys by trying to gain their confidence and then run over and be like, hey, you're never going to believe what these guys believe. That's crazy. So there's a lot of that kind of talk and that kind of tone that's really off-putting and really entrenches him right off the bat as like, hey, I am a status quo guy and don't for a second think that I'm not because I am. I'm with you, the cool people. So that's against that backdrop everything else takes place. And as you can tell from the stuff that I mentioned there, he lumps in guys like Alex Jones with the Ku Klux Klan. I'm not the biggest Alex Jones fan at all, but I think that's a huge stretch to put those two guys in the same, even put them in the same book. Um, so there's, there's that kind of guilt by association kind of thing that uh, some of these guys that uh, like the jihadist guy and people like that, are then the next page will be somebody like uh, David Icke or um, uh, I'm trying to think of the other. There's one guy from the, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of the newspaper that's now defunct um, uh, that goes to the Bilderberg uh, group. But anyway, all that aside, this is actually a pretty good book. There's, there's actually some really good reporting kind of hanging out, riding along with some of these guys as they look into some big conspiracies. And there's actually some pretty good information covered, like the Bilderberg meeting. And this was originally published, I want to say 2000 or 2001, came out right before 9-11. He probably would not have written this book after 9-11 because uh, just his general attitude, I think he, I don't think he would have had the cojones to have have done it. He wrote The Men That Stare at Goats after 9-11, but yeah, this book would not have gotten it. Uh, it's copyright 2002, but yeah, but it was all the content was actually collected um, prior to 9-11. Um, and I originally found out about this. I listened to him being interviewed on um, one of the local NPR talk shows here in Dallas, and I wasn't so much as impressed with him as I was with the subject matter he covered, and I was kind of surprised that uh, an NPR program was actually talking about uh, some of these things that they would that somebody would have actually even dug into somebody like David Icke. But again, a lot of that goes back to that when you put all the lump all these guys together, like Ruby Ridge and and uh, the Ku Klux Klan and all these guys. Again, it has that kind of guilt by association effect where. Uh, People go, oh, well, they're, they're all the same. So they're all white supremacists or whatever. And I think we've seen way too much of that lately. So um, that kind of thing is, is really frustrating. But there's some really good information about Ruby Ridge. This was one of the first books I ever read that really had a more balanced take on that. If you are unfamiliar with the, the happenings, what went down at Ruby Ridge, and you want a more... Um, 
nuanced view of that, of what really took place, stripping away the left and right politics, there's actually some pretty good information on that in here. Um, so there's some things like that that I have to say that is, uh, is appreciated. But unfortunately, like I said, it's, it's lumped in with some of these other guys. Um, he tags along with uh, Alex Jones as he sneaks into a um, Bohemian Grove meeting in California. Lots of good. Some of it's pretty funny. Some of it's downright creepy. Um, some of it's just kind of silly. But overall, it's a good read. And uh, like I said, if you can get past his overall tone of kind of like, hey, I'm, I'm playing like I'm pals with these guys so that I can go tell the cool kids how stupid these guys are. It's kind of that tone. And every now and then he'll kind of say, gee, they might really be onto something, but he's real quick to jump back to, I'm a status quo guy, don't, you know, don't fault me for this. So again, that part of it gets a little, a little frustrating. But other than that, if you're willing to see past that, those faults, this is a, a, a good read. I do recommend it. Men That Stare at Goats, if, if I was to put his uh, books in order, he has three that I've read. He has them, which I would say is definitely the best of them. Um, the Men That Stare at Goats is a good drop down from that. It's still, it's an entertaining read, but not near the, the content of this one. And then there's The Psychopath Test, which is even down even lower, I think. Psychopath Test had a really good premise, but just doesn't really take it where it could have gone. But anyway, um, Adventures with Extremists, Them by John Ronson. I do, do recommend this. And this is a very easy one to get. I don't think this is hard to find at all. Um, again, mainstream dude, so you could guarantee his stuff is going to be all over Amazon. And before I go, I just want to point out, um, I, I switched bookcases uh, just for a change of scenery for those of you watching these videos. And of course, I have my clock, my beautiful clock that my children got for me for my birthday from a flea market near our house. And this clock is awesome. I refer to it as the transporter accident clock because it looks like an eagle and a moose uh, wound up in the transporter together and bad, terrible, terrible things happened and unleashed this clock. But it's totally awesome and I wanted to show it off here. I also have the bust of the late, great makeup effects artist, Dick Smith, along with a, a numerous other uh, little artifacts from my life. So anyway, thanks again for watching. I know some of these get kind of rambling. I hope that some of you find this these entertaining. Really, ultimately, I hope my kids sift through all these videos someday and, and make sense of my book collection because so much stuff like this. I think I might have mentioned in a previous video. I did a rough count the other night after doing some of these book reviews, and I think I've got about 2,600 books. So I've got a few years of material here to do. Um, so, yeah, I've got my work cut out for me. Um, but I'm going to start with the... the uh, the ones that are still fresh in my brain. So there you go. Anyway, so all that aside, this is Them by Adventures with Extremists by John Ronson.